I would hate for this parliament to only get half the story. And unfortunately, when former Prime Minister Turnbull and now the member for Riverina talked about defence spending, they're, he, they're both missing a really crucial piece. They're not mentioning that defence spending also rose to 1.93 per cent of GDP under Labor in 2009-10, which was higher than at any time in the Howard government. It was also the highest figure since 1994, when Paul Keating was Prime Minister, and defence spending as a share of GDP was 1.96 per cent. So I'm sure none of the members opposite would want there to be a misleading figure used here to mislead the Australian public about what governments do of all colours in government, because both sides take the defence of our nation very seriously. And it is appalling to see it being used as some sort of little political tool in these last recent days. What, I, what I'd also like to point out is that, Deputy Speaker, the Prime Minister spent a lot of time today trying out his latest messaging about the economy. What is missing is a key point, and that is something that COVID has shown us. If you don't have your health, not a lot else matters. And we've seen that. We've seen that with people's lives. Uh, and I've, it's all very well to talk about how important the economy is. The economy is actually about people, and that's how we see it. And we intend to have, if we are in government, a strong economy. But not at the expense of people, in support of people and their health and their security. The obsession with political point scoring that we're seeing from those opposite means that they have had no interest in solving the problems that have emerged and been highlighted by COVID. They've only been concerned about making sure they don't have to take responsibility for anything. They don't want you to blame them for anything, they, but they'll take credit for everything. The Prime Minister leads this charge. It comes from the top down. Now, if you were outside this place looking in, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this country uh, is being run by, isn't being run by a Prime Minister, but being run by an adolescent, because it reminds me of an adolescent who hasn't yet learned how to take responsibility hasn't yet learnt that you have to stand up and say, I'm sorry, sometimes, unconditionally. And hasn't learnt that sometimes you can't just push the blame onto other people and pretend it wasn't you. Australians deserve more than that from a Prime Minister. And they deserve much more than they're getting from this government that is just fighting within itself and dividing the nation. On this side, Labor wants to see a nation that is brought together. At the end of a first term of a Labor government, there are a whole lot of things that are achievable that people might struggle to conceive when they think about those opposite running the place. But working with the Australians, there's so much that we can do. We can see more things being made at home, and I stand here very proudly as the Member of Parliament who has the only Australian manufacturer of rapid antigen tests that were listed in the initial listing on the TGA for the home, at home rapid antigen tests. And that's a company called Innovation Scientific. And I've been working with them now for many, many months to educate small businesses long before they were available and to show them what the quality of an Australian product is. Uh, that's the sort of thing we should have more of in the Hawkesbury and in the country. And the way we do that is we power it with cheap energy. We know that people should be paid a, a secure and, a, and decent wage so they can live with security. So there are certain things that we can't compete with other countries on, but we can compete on energy. One of the keys to a future made in Australia is cheap, renewable energy. And it also creates jobs. Our Powering Australia plan will create over 600,000 jobs. It'll, we will be able to boost renewables to 82 per cent of the grid by 2030, and people will get a drop in their energy bills by $275 by 2050. 
That's what Labor can do, working with people, not fighting amongst themselves. Okay.